כאן קדוש ערב טוב, משנה יומי, מסכת בבא קמא, פרק ז', הוא משנה ג' and ד', 3 and 4. Now we're going to be talking about עדים זומים. Remember that there's a concept of הכחשה and הזמה. הכחשה is when you have contradicting testimony. So two witnesses come and they say that this person did A in this certain place at this certain time, and two other witnesses come and they say, what are you talking about? We were there at the exact same time, exact same place, nothing happened. That's called הכחשה, contradicting testimony. evidence and therefore they cancel out. There's another concept which is called Hazama. What is Hazama? Edim Zumim. Two witnesses come and they say, listen, this person did A and this certain time and this certain place. Two other witnesses say, what are you talking about? Maybe he did do it, we have no idea, but at that time you guys were with us in Honolulu in a completely different place. What's going on? That's called Edim Zumim. So the Mishnah comes and it starts as follows. Ganav al pishnaim. Imagine right now a person comes and he steals, and there are two witnesses that are coming and saying that he stole, right? Whether it's an ox or a sheep. Betavachu machal al pihem, and that he slaughtered and sold him again according to the same witnesses. Venim tzu zomamim. Now these witnesses were found to be false witnesses. They're edim zomamim. Meshalim akol. They have to pay the entire four and five times. Why? Because they completely wanted him to lose the entire amount of the money. What happens if he stole and there's two witnesses that he stole? But there's a completely separate two witnesses that are coming and saying that he slaughtered or sold it. And everybody was found to be Zomim. So what happens? The first group that said that he stole, they have to pay Arishonim, Mishalim, Tashonim, Kevah, they have to pay the double. Why? Because if he stole, he has to pay double. That's what they wanted him to pay. The last ones that said that he slaughtered, sold it, they had to pay three times the amount. Why? Because again, what did they want him to do? To pay five. So if the first ones have to pay double, so then they only have to pay the remaining three times the amount, which three and two is five. That's why he has to pay four or five. Depends obviously if he's of a ox or a sheep. What happens now? What happens now? What happens only if the latter ones were found to be Zomim? So the thief has to pay Tashum Kefel double, because he did steal, but they have to pay three times, because again, they lied about the slaughtering or selling. What about though, if it's only the, one of the last ones that was made a Zomim, but so the entire second testimony was found to be annulled. Why? Because once you annul the second testimony, that's it. But if it's one of the first ones, but there's nothing left. Why? Shim en gneva, because if he didn't actually steal, then there's no slaughtering and selling. Even if he did slaughter and sell, what do I care? Maybe it's his home. Meaning I need the stealing first, which are the first two witnesses first, in order to continue everything else. Mishnah Dalet comes and it says, Ganav al pishnaim. What happens right now if someone steals with two witnesses? Meaning two witnesses come and they say, he stole. Now he comes and he slaughtered and sold it, but there's only one witness on that. Or he himself is the one that admits that he slaughtered and sold it. So he only has to pay Tashum Kefil. Because since it's true, he has two witnesses that he stole, he has to pay double. But he doesn't have to pay the four and five because it's either he himself said it or there was one, one witness. Right? He says, What happens if he stole and he slaughtered on Shabbat? Remember, in such a case that he stole and slaughtered on Shabbat, he's chayav mita. He's going to be killed. Sekila. Therefore, he's obviously not going to pay the four and five. Or, he slaughtered and, sold, and he did it to the Avodah Zarah himself. Not that he just sold it to the Avodah Zarah. He slaughtered it to Avodah Zarah. So if he did Avodah Zarah, he's going to be killed. Or, he stole from the father and then the father died. And then he slaughtered it or sold it. Now remember, once the father dies and now belongs to him, when he's doing the Shechita or the Mechira, part of it is his. Meaning part of this animal is his now that he's coming because he already inherited a part of, part of it. Or, if he stole it and he consecrated it. And now when he's slaughtering it and selling it, it already belongs to the Betar Midash. Remember, when it belongs to the Betar Midash, you don't pay Arba Chamisha. You only pay Arba Chamisha or Kefel when it belongs to a human being, not to the Betar Midash. So he says, Mishlen Tashum Kefel, you only pay Kefel, but you do not pay the Arba'a Vachamisha. Okay, in, the, in such a case. Fine. So now, what happens is, Rabbi Shimon comes and he says, for one second, Kod Shim Shechayab Achriyutam, if it's going to be that it's Kod Shim, that you're going to be obligated, right? Which means that if right now something happens to it, you have to pay it back. So the Rabbi Shalom Tashum, you have to pay back the four and five times. Why? But since you're responsible for it, it's your property, and therefore you have to pay for it. But if you're not going to be chayav achriyutam, then you're going to be patur in such a case. You're going to be exempt in such a case.